We have been having a heck of a time finding a place to shoot since we moved to the Savannah area. But last weekend, we got to head back to the Western side of the state to our range there and run a steel challenge match. So in this week's video, I'm going to walk you guys through the stages, talk to you guys about some of the rules and explain to you why you should consider getting into steel challenge. Put simply, Steel Challenge is a static shooting competition where shooters engage steel targets. There are usually eight stages. I think that kind of just depends on the range you're at and the match you're shooting, but I think there's usually eight stages and at each stage, you're going to run that stage five different times. And there's usually five steel targets out there. So you'll shoot a minimum of five rounds um, per run, but you'll do each stage five times and you wanna load more than five rounds into your mag because you'll inevitably miss. Most of the rules in Steel Challenge are pretty basic. If you are safe with your gun handling, meaning that you know the rules of firearm safety and you can implement them consistently and are not a danger to flagging yourself or other people, then you can probably participate in Steel Challenge. There are some rules to note about gun and holster selection, which is where I actually wound up breaking the rules. Both USPSA and IDPA allow you to shoot from inside the waistband, both strong side, appendix carry, whatever. And so I just assumed that you can do that in Steel Challenge. But sure enough, they have a super de duper de great rule that does not allow you to do that. But I have somehow made it through two Steel Challenge matches without having anyone ever mention this rule. But going forward, for me and for anyone watching, it's a rule, you're not supposed to shoot from an appendix carry inside the waistband holster. I'll read you the rule. Due to the unique nature of Steel Challenge, drawing from concealment or from inside the waistband is not allowed. I would be really curious to see like, what is the unique nature of drawing from a holster in a range setting and engaging steel targets. Like what, I don't understand what's unique about that. Outs like that's different from literally any other context in which you'd be competing or shooting at the range in general. So hopefully they'll change that rule. All of that sass put aside, I actually had a ton of fun shooting Steel Challenge and I think that you should consider getting into Steel Challenge as well because it creates an environment where you are wanting to test yourself. You're timing yourself, you're getting an idea of how accurate you can be when you're kind of stressed and feeling a little bit under pressure with people around you. But the really nice thing about Steel Challenge is that it isolates some other things for you that can kind of bring that uh, newness level down and bring that stress level down if you're just kind of stepping into competition for the first time because there's no movement in Steel Challenge. Whereas in USPSA and IDPA, you're moving around, running around in the stage and engaging targets that way. Whereas in Steel Challenge, you are standing in a box and you are drawing your gun and you're engaging those targets and then it's over. You don't have to run or do anything else. And I think that is really great if you're in a position where you are safe with your gun handling and you're not a danger to other people um, via flagging other people or yourself, then you're probably in a position where you can shoot Steel Challenge and enjoy it and get a lot out of it. I did have a ton of fun at this match and I wanted to show you guys some of the stages. I was shooting my Glock 48 MOS with a hollow Sun 407K with Gen 2 Shield Arms mags. And something you guys ask me a lot is what plate I use to mount my optic. And I use the CHPWS plate. Oh, and I was using my Enigma Express, but per the rules, shouldn't have been. So in Steel Challenge, there's those five targets out there, but one of them is the stop plate, which stops your time, kind of like the eight ball and pool. You don't wanna hit it until you're finished. On this stage, the eight ball was the circle seal right in the middle. I am by no means a grand stage planner, but I wanted to start with the large square plate right in front of me because the first round from the draw can be the most challenging. So I chose the closest, largest target. Next was the circle to the left, and then I transitioned to the furthest square target and worked my way into the stop plate from there. You'll notice that I dealt with a lot of malfunctions through this match. That wasn't a gun problem, a shooter problem, or a magazine failure. It was most certainly the reloads I was using. I've been told that the Glock 48 has a shorter chamber, so we think that's why some of our reloads had a problem seating in my Glock 48, but not in our Glock 19. 
We forgot to grab some factory ammo on our way out the door, but let me tell you, that'll be the last time I use reloads in any kind of formal setting. It wound up being great practice for me though. Something I'm really proud of from this match is the fact that I maintained a positive mental headspace the entire time, regardless of my times, malfunctions, or other shortcomings. Negative self-talk takes the fun out of shooting and consistently hurts performance. Maintaining a positive headspace makes the entire experience way more fun, and I think most people find that they shoot better when they're not in their head. Thanks for watching this week's video, and let me know down in the comments if you have tried Steel Challenge or any other shooting sports, and if you haven't, what exactly are you waiting for?